Good morning, Big Data London. Um, I'm Alex Reed, Senior Manager of Data Platforms at EDF, and I'm here today to give you an overview at how at EDF we're boosting our data productivity with Matillion. So, the way I'm going to approach this today is I'm going to give you a foundational overview of what Matillion is, because I'm going to assume there's some people in the room who have never used Matillion, not sure what it's about. So I'm going to give you an overview of what Matillion is, what the components it is that offers, and just some basic fundamental information about how we use it in EDF. After that, I'll take you on a journey of why we chose Matillion, uh, how we implemented it at EDF, and the sort of business outcomes that Matillion is helping to drive for us. So like all organizations, data initially was a challenge for us. Our data professionals spent a lot of time working on data integration with a myriad of technologies and vendor solutions. Our data scientists, much like the statistics on this board, they reported that their biggest hurdle was accessing data, and we had real-life scenarios where we've seen this play out, where we had multiple environments where data was siloed, having to join data across multiple environments and different sets of tooling. And then finally, we have a large amount of data professionals who say the workload exceeds the team's capacity, and I'm sure that's relevant for a lot of people in this audience, whereby you've got a big backlog of demand and you don't have the supply to meet it. So what is data productivity? Data productivity measures the ability of the team to deliver quality and consumable data to the business quickly and reliably. So, why Matillion? Matillion is the data productivity team for data teams. It makes data work more productive by empowering the entire data team, coders and non-coders alike, to move data, transform data, and orchestrate data pipelines faster. So, how does Matillion do it? And this is something that we've implemented at EDF. I'm sure that a lot of the people in the crowd here uh, see the relevance to this slide here. So we move data from hundreds of data sources into our data lake and supporting data warehouse platforms. We transform the data into multiple formats and data layers depending upon the use cases that that data layer needs to support. And the brilliant thing about Matillion is as it supports both hardcore coders and low-code coders, we're able to roll that tooling out to business-wide skilled people in order to perform that transformation layer. And then the orchestration, the ability to handle pipelines at scale with different levels of cap uh, capability and complexity. So what is Matillion? It's everyone ready. And I think for me, what that means to me is that, like I just said, whether you're a hardcore data engineer, MLOps engineer, whether you're a business analyst or a data analyst with low SQL Python skills, the tool caters for everyone. Stack ready, so platform agnostic, you can roll it out across multiple platforms, you can use it with multiple data warehouse platforms, it's not siloed into one platform vendor. And future ready, because it's a cloud platform itself, it's a native cloud application, it means we can roll it out and we know we're future-proofed. We haven't got to worry about whether there's a roadmap to use it with future cloud features that are coming up. OK, then, so into the bit about EDF and why Matillion for EDF, some of the challenges that we had at EDF and how we've tackled data engineering, MLOps engineering, self-serve, using Matillion and other technical components. So, a simple architecture that was easy to manage. So, as a, as a platforms manager, the least amount of infrastructure I have to manage and my team have to manage, the better. So, we're a big believer in PaaS solutions, SaaS solutions, removing the administrative overhead of managing these platforms ourselves. We just want the vendor to manage that for us. And that was a big selling point of the Matillion and especially the data productivity cloud that is coming up. A long-term vision to remove platform management from the consumer, alongside what I just said then. Quick speed to production. So again, the least amount of components or infrastructure, 
that we have to manage for our vendors. The quicker we can deploy to production, if the tool is easy to use and consumable by multiple business users, again, we can roll out and scale quickly. EDF needed a tool that could work on all data layers to help get biz data business ready. So historically at EDF, we had multiple vendors that would play in the ETL, ELT space. We would have some tools that would do data loading. We'd have some data tools that would do transformation. What we wanted is one tool that could do it all. Remove multiple vendors from the stack with an all-conquering data productivity tool. Anyone that's ever heard me do any speeches or blog posts will hear me bang on a lot about a less is more uh, tech strategy. So I'm a big believer in I don't want to manage dozens, if not hundreds, of vendors' relationships. I want a handful of big players, create an ecosystem, and manage the vendor relationship through there. Remove the need to have a large amount of skills to support data productivity tooling. So again, comes back to previous points I've made. If the vendor is managing the tooling and the tooling is usable by both business users and hardcore data engineers and MLOps users, it means that we don't need a large amount of skills in order to use the tooling that we want to use in our data architecture. It had language support for core data languages that we use primarily at EDF, which is SQL and Python to drive data analytics and data engineering and data warehousing. And neat integration with EDF platforms of choice, which is AWS, Snowflake, and Calibra. OK, so this is a good overview of our reference data architecture that we have at the customer's part of the business at EDF. Now, as you can imagine at EDF, this is not an exhaustive list of data sources or downstream tools that our consumers use. I just put on this reference architecture just some of the big players that would form part of that um, data sources and federated team products. But as you could probably imagine at EDF, we have hundreds of data sources. We have um, structured, semi-structured, unstructured data. We have near, near real-time needs. We have batch needs. So historically, if I think of our data architecture, prior to this, we would have, in the data lake, we would have data lakes spread across multiple platforms and multiple vendor choices. If I think about the ELT ETL layer, as I just said, it wouldn't just be Matillion in the mix here. We would have at least four or five tools that would be playing in that space. The data warehouse platform. We had um, three warehouse platforms in our cloud platform alone. Um, and then if I think about some of our legacy on-premise solutions, that would then, you know, there would be another five, six vendors in the mix. And one of the big problems we had was MLOps and data science. So, Historically, prior to Snowflake and Matillion, what we had to do as an organization was take all of the data out of those um, data warehouse platforms that I just mentioned, merge it into one MLOps platform, and then do our data wrangling, data analysis in that platform. Now, what you can probably imagine is, first of all, the latency of moving all of that data from multiple data silos and putting it in one location. Then, we've got the overhead of having to manage that MLOps platform and manage the data pipelines, the MLOps um, pipelines within that platform. So what the beauty is with Matillion combined with Snowflake and um, SageMaker and Snowpark pri primarily as the integration is we can store all of our data in one location, one central source, and then we can have data science products run over Snowpark, execute in Python on our strategic data assets. So no more data movement, no more data silos. And the role that Matillion plays with that is getting data business ready. So as I mentioned before, we've got hundreds of data sources, uh, EDF, industry, retail, EBS, which is our enterprise business solution systems, and WMS, which is our wholesale markets, basically trading. Um, so with Matillion, we can get all of those data assets into Snowflake in whether we want it in a staging layer, whether we want it dimensionally modeled, whether we want to prep it for MLOps. It's all in one location. And 
Another topic that I want to discuss is you will notice the blue boxes. Uh, so historically at EDF, another problem we had is that we had a central team, my platform team, doing all of the data engineering, all of the ML ops across all federated business units. Now, as you can imagine, that led to a large backlog of items that needed to be delivered. Um, it led to resource constraints, technology constraints. So I'm sure there's a lot of people in this room that have heard of data mesh and data fabric. So over recent months, we've walked up to the idea of empowerment and in federating certain capabilities into the business units. So where you see those blue boxes now, my team, the platform team, provide the architecture, governance, oversight for those federated areas. But then we have platform engineers, MLOps engineers, data engineers in those federated business units using tooling such as Matillion in order to create their own data products. We have no involvement in that, and nor do we want any. We want to empower these teams to just get on with it as treating data as a product. OK, our journey onto Matillion. So naturally, we had all of these data sources. We had all of these legacy platforms. There needed to be a migration event in order to enable all of this great stuff to happen. So again, the less is more tech strategy. As you can see, minimal vendors in the stack. We've done a 12-month migration, hundreds of jobs rewritten. And the beautiful thing about the Matillion UI and how component-friendly it is is that historically, if you do a large-scale large -scale migration, you're looking at months before you get going. Then you're looking at, I don't know, an 18 to 24 month migration. Because we were able to roll out certain job development to the end users and to the business users, that advanced the migration curve. Because simply put, we didn't need to rely on a small team of data engineers to do all that migration and transformation. Um, what are these jobs now serving? These jobs in Matillion are absolutely fundamental to what we do as a business, both from an insight and regulatory perspective. So if I think about our feeds, we have debt feeds. We have um, right track processes. We have regulatory outputs that we have to do just to operate as a business. And previously, prior to the Matillion and Snowflake relationship, there were times where we breached our SLA just simply because we couldn't scale. Um, Teams quickly upskill to use Matillion. So as I said before, the UI and the component-based approach that Matillion offers leads to a quicker uptime and upskilling learning curve, I suppose, than historical hard coding, hardcore coding platforms. And it enabled us to get data business ready. And I'll keep saying that because poor data in, poor data out. You need a tool, and then you need the um, the capabilities within that tooling in order to enable you to transform data into a usable format. OK, so how has Matillion enabled value at EDF? So first of all, as I said, we no longer have a dozen legacy and siloed platforms. We have all of our data stored within our Snowflake platform. It enables critical downstream processes, as I've just mentioned. Data science, and this is a big one I want to discuss with you guys, is that we at EDF, our mission statement is to help Britain achieve net zero. And as you can imagine, data is absolutely fundamental to that mission. We cannot do it without data. And if I think of some of the data science products we have is uh, helping the national grid uh, with the beat the peak, so basically turn down energy at core usage times. Um, also, um, helping the financially vulnerable, um, consumption analytics, whereby we use uh, tools such as energy hubs in order to advise customers how to reduce their consumption. This has two benefits. First of all, it enables us to reduce customers' consumption, thereby helping the planet because we're consuming less energy. Secondly, it helps people save cash as well because naturally, la less consumption equals less cost. Marketing, um, we run all of our marketing campaigns out of Snowflake. So we have customer, customer lifetime value models. We have um, customer 360 models and propensity modeling, which is run with a combination of Snowflake, Matillion, and other marketing tooling, which enables us to run marketing campaigns at our customers in order to advise them of the latest products, advise them of the latest EV. Um, EV events going on in the industry, whatever it would be, regulatory requirements. 
So that has been a big enablement prior to Snowflake, Matillion, and the relationships I just mentioned. That was a lot more cumbersome. As you can imagine, the marketing team would have to analyze half a dozen different data sources where customer data was spread across, bring that data together, model it, make sure it's data quality check created. They no longer have that hassle. And finally, self-serve. As I mentioned before, I have no desire for our team to conquer the whole organization and their data needs. First of all, it's all about empowerment, and self-serve is a big element to that. So the role that Matillion plays within that is, historically, a tool such as Matillion, and even initially at EDF, I suppose, it was just used by the data engineering team, right? The data engineering team would bring data sources into the data lake, into the data warehouse platform, and then produce data models. Now we have business users, BI teams, MI teams, data analysis teams using Matillion tooling and removing that workload from my team. And what is the future? Um, so less tech for the same outcome. So I'm really excited by the Data Productivity Cloud. The Data Productivity Cloud is Matillion's new offering, which is going to be heavily SaaS pass base, which means further reductions of infrastructure required in the EDF platform team to manage. It will be cloud. It will be primarily cloud native. There will be hybrid options, and we're really excited about taking that journey. Adoption. So. Even though I just um, gave an overview of how we're using it in a self-serve manner and we're rolling that out across the business, I don't claim that we're complete. We're not perfect. Um, there's still plenty of teams out in the EDF organization that are not using Matillion. And it's my desire to empower more teams to get data business ready for themselves and analyze data with tooling such as Matillion. Value. Um, I'm a big believer in chasing value item items. If I, if I turn back time and when we've done the Snowflake and Matillion migration, if I'd have just focused on, I don't know, migrating data, data assets that we've always had into Snowflake and doing the same reporting and analytics we've always done, the business wouldn't have thanked me for that. All we would have done is siloed, uh, we would have condensed our um, vendors even, but we wouldn't have been driving any additional value. So that's why. The data science products I mentioned and the MLOps platform is pretty transformative in what we're trying to do from a value adding perspective. AI, I'm really excited about the potential that AI um, has to offer both tooling and data products. So when I think about the tooling space, um, anyone in here that's used CodePilot has helped advance developers roll out code in products um, and deploy it via GitHub. So I'm excited to see what eventually Matillion can do in this space. Um, and then when I think from a data product perspective, I'm sure everyone in here has heard of chat GBT, LLMs. And um, at EDF, we're just starting that journey ourselves. I mean, we just developed our first set of LMMs, LLMs even, to um, roll out across our customers' business and do things like learning questions that our customers are asking and the answers that we've previously given in order to improve the customer journey. And then transformation, if, um, I think about the effect that Matillion and tooling has had on a, as a transformative effect in our organization. We're currently in the middle of completely revolutionizing our retail business, which is residential and small medium enterprise business customers. Now, what we've done is removed all of our legacy operational tooling and um, and yeah, uh, started implementing new solutions, new cloud-based solutions, what our um, competitors in the market are doing. And for me, we will not survive as an organization, or we've certainly decline as an organization at least, if we are not at the forefront of that transformation. So as I said, in the retail business, we're currently in the middle of that transformation. We've got, we're migrating five and a half million residential customers to our new tooling and platform, and then after that, the journey does not stop, right? We'll start looking at other business areas and where else we can roll this out in EDF. And that is the end of my presentation for today, um, ladies and gentlemen. I, I hope you found it informative. Um, if you see me on the sidelines, I'm more than happy to take questions or answer anything. It'd be great to catch up with people. And I f thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. Thank you.